Hello, I'm Nancy Blackman and I'm on the board of Gathering for Gardener. Are you tired of staying at home, wearing masks, anxious to go back to how things were in 2019? I am. Fred Gluck, a friend of mine, shared a Washington Post article with me about a report of people in intensive care in New South Wales in Australia. There are 141 people, 43 of them were in intensive care. Jerry McNulty, the director of the health protection in New South Wales, reported that all but one were vaccinated that were in intensive care. And that he had misspoken. He meant to say all but one, uh, all but one were unvaccinated, but he said vaccinated. And what he said, but it was too late. He had misspoken, and what he said went viral. And though it was mathematically nonsensical, people believed it and spread this information. Why was it effectively impossible what he said? Well, at the time, most of the population of New South Wales was unvaccinated. And if vaccines were totally ineffective, unvaccinated people were equally likely to be hospitalized as vaccinated people. Um, so some of the unvaccinated people would have ended up in intensive care, not just one of them. But people were happily believed what he said. And with social media, they spread falsehoods. And these falsehoods spread very rapidly. They spread faster than the truth. So information spreads like viruses, but misinformation spreads faster. And it can be deadly in the case of COVID. Um, so it's good if we can uh, effectively assess information, and I found a nice website um, on um, the WHO website. I found these tips for uh, navigating information about COVID. So I'm just going to go through the recommendations. So assess the sources of the, the information. Who shared the information with you? Were friends or relatives? And you still need to vet the source, regardless of who you hear it from. Go beyond the headlines. A lot of people use um, provocative or sensational headlines, so you'll read their articles. Identify the author. Is the author real or is it made up? Um, is the author credible? Check the date. Is it a current date? Is it a real date or is it an imaginary date? Examine whether there's supporting evidence for the information that's presented. Check whether there's biases of the author of the article and turn to fact checkers to see whether it's, uh, it's um, you know, whether somebody's saying it's not true or not. And so if we were to do this, maybe we can stop the spread of misinformation, or at least slow it down. At the beginning, there were limited vaccines, and priority was given to the most vulnerable and essential workers. But now vaccines are widely available. And what got me to give this talk was I know several people who have decided that they know better than, um, than the you know, virus researchers. They're, my cousin decided he didn't want to get vaccinated. He only got vaccinated because a number of us bothered him so much that he got sick of it. Another friend of mine uh, decided to get one Pfizer shot. She thought 80% is good enough for her. She didn't need to get the second one. But the vaccines provide excellent protection against hospitalizations and death. And uh, COVID skeptics and anti-vaxxers are becoming adept at exploiting people's lack of understanding of math and statistics. If a vaccine has an efficacy of 80%, it does not mean the, the vaccine will work 80% of the time. You know, but it means that an, a, a vaccinated population, 80% fewer people will contract the disease and the, when they become in contact with it and they'll experience lower or less 
severe symptoms. So can you still get COVID after getting vaccinated? My cousin said, I got COVID. And he said, look, you're vaccinated and you got COVID. So, you know, the vaccine doesn't work. So, you know, I hope that people can understand what the vaccine will do. Um, what do I want you to take away from this? COVID is spreading because people believe and share misinformation. There's a wealth of misinformation. Let's stop the spread of misinformation. How can we educate people about probability and statistics? So please help me in combating misinformation. And there's a nice book, by the way, that I came across that I recommend checking out. And please, you know, tell me, share with me your ideas for, for how we can combat misinformation.